Welcome, dear friends, to our time of devotional reflection for, oh, Wednesday now, January the 25th, 2023. My name is Brian J. Monroe. I'm pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia, and this is coming to you from my office in the church there. We are reading John MacArthur's excellent devotional, Drawing Near, Drawing Near. Daily Readings for a Deeper Faith. And today's entry is entitled, <coughs> pardon me, you get me words and all, Understanding Your Calling. We read from scripture, I pray that you may know what is the hope of God's calling. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. And the subtitle is, The hope of your calling is grounded in God's promises and in Christ's accomplishments. In Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 14, Paul proclaims the blessings of our salvation. In verse 18, he prays that we will comprehend those great truths, which he summarizes in the phrase, the hope of his calling. Calling here refers to God's effectual calling, the calling that redeems the soul. Scripture speaks of two kinds of callings, the gospel or general call and the effectual or specific call, the gospel call. It, the gospel call is given by men and is a universal call to repent and trust Christ for salvation. You can see examples of that in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and in Acts 17 verses 30 to 31. This call goes out to all sinners, that's everybody, but not all who hear it respond in faith. The effectual call is given by God only to the elect. Here I will say that uh, Pastor MacArthur is a Calvinist and I have no qualms about reading his work, but I may not see things precisely the way he does, but that doesn't mean we don't believe this, and I believe this. The only reason I understood God's call on my life is because he helped me do it. He made me do it. But by it, he speaks to the soul. God speaks to the soul. He grants saving faith and ushers elect sinners into salvation. That's in John chapter 6, verses 37 to 44, and also verse 65. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. All who receive it respond in faith. The hope that your effectual calling instills is grounded in God's promises and in Christ's accomplishment. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's Christ's main accomplishment. And it's characterized by confidently expecting and yet patiently waiting for those promises to be fulfilled. It is your hope of final glorification and of sharing God's glory when Christ returns, which is promised all the way through Scripture, but also, but specifically in Colossians 3, verse 4. It is a source of strength and stability amid the trials of life, outlined in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. And consequently, it should fill you with joy. Romans 5 verse 2 says, Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. And it should motivate you into godly living, as it says in 1 John chapter 3 verse 3. As you face this new day, do so with the confidence that you are one of God's elect. He called you to himself and will hold you there no matter what circumstances you face. Nothing can separate you from his love. Read Romans chapter 8 verses 38 and 39. Dear friends, the following is reprinted for you in the description section of this video down below. Uh, the suggestions for prayer are to thank God for the security of your salvation. Amen. Ask him to impress on your heart the blessings and responsibilities of your calling. We have to know this so we can live the way he has called us to live. 
and live today in anticipation of Christ's imminent return. And I would say today it's closer than ever before. For further study, Joshua's call to lead Israel was not a call to salvation, but it illustrates some important principles for spiritual leadership. You might not see yourself as a spiritual leader, but you are important to those who look to you as an example of Christian character. Just turn around. If there's anybody following you, you're a leader. Read Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 to 9 and then ask or answer these questions. What were the circumstances of Joshua's call? That's specifically laid out in verses 1 and 2. And then what promises did God make to him? He made those in verses 3 to 6. And then what did God require of Joshua? And those are in verses 7 to 9. As always, friends, I commend you for just taking a few minutes out of your day to listen to devotional reflections and thank you so much for letting me be uh, able to provide these for you uh, the words of John MacArthur who uh, I respect deeply and uh, whose teaching has guided me quite frequently until we're able to be together tomorrow to hear tomorrow's devotional reflection I bid you in the name of Jesus Christ Shalom